For over three years, I've had daily backups of my data without having to do anything. One configuration done three years ago, and that's it. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process on how I back up all of my data. I'll be showing a workflow, meaning you could use a PC or a Mac, TrueNAS, Unraid, Synology, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get our data from our device to our NAS and then to the cloud, and we're not gonna have to do anything other than this one configuration, and then everything else will run seamlessly. Before we get started, I just wanna point out that the general data I'm talking about in this video is data you cannot lose. For the most part, all of your data doesn't need to be backed up offsite, but the important data should. There are also many different tools you can use that will accomplish similar results, but the process being shown is what's worked for me. So we're first gonna talk about the general idea of this, and it's kind of important to understand how this works. Now. We know that you're supposed to have three copies of your data on at least two separate mediums with one offsite. That's just a general guideline that you could go based off of. What we're gonna do is set up a sync task on our device. And anytime we update, add, or change an item, it's gonna automatically sync to our NAS. At that point, the NAS is gonna be the center of this because the NAS will then back up on a regular basis and you won't really have to worry about anything from there. The data will automatically get from your device to your NAS and then your NAS will take care of the rest. That's the general idea. Let's take a little deeper look at that now though. So from a sync perspective, I'm gonna be using Synology Drive. I have a full video that I did last week on that. I'll leave a pop-up to that now. But you can use Nextcloud as well or you can really use any other syncing service. The idea is that we're gonna take the data and automatically sync it from our device to our NAS. So any sync job will automatically do that and therefore you can really use any tool that you wanna use. After the data gets to our NAS, we're gonna take a look at data protection. So what I mean by that is we're going to automatically take snapshots of that data on a regular interval. That will allow us to restore any of those snapshots if we ever need to. Now snapshots are configured for the most part, very differently depending on the tool that you're using. So the idea is the same, but how you accomplish it will be different. The final step in this is gonna be the backup. Now I'm gonna be backing up to the cloud. You can back up to wherever you want. The idea though, is that you should really back up somewhere outside of your house, somewhere other than where the data is currently living. There's many reasons why, we're not gonna get into it in this video, but the idea is that you have to have some separation so that in a worst case event, if the data, all of the data was lost, you'll have a secondary location where you can restore that data from. I'm gonna be picking the cloud. If you have a friend's house, a family member's house that you wanna stick a computer or a NAS or something, you can use that too. There's not a right or wrong way of doing this. You just have to make sure that the data is outside of your house. Now this backup is really gonna be used for a disaster recovery type of scenario. So what I mean by that is in a worst case event, the data is completely lost, you have no copies of it, and you need to restore that data. That's what we're really gonna be using this for. So we're quickly gonna walk through a demo, and by the end of this, hopefully you'll understand how the process works, because like I said, it's a process. You can go through and you can apply this to anything that you want. So what I set up here is I set up a sync task that will automatically sync from my documents folder to my Synology NAS. The sync tool utilizes Synology Drive. Like I said, I have a video, I'll leave in the description. But the idea is anytime a file gets added, updated, or deleted, it will automatically sync those changes to my NAS. So at that point, the central location that we're gonna be talking about is my NAS. Now on my NAS, I have snapshots configured. Depending on the type of data that you're syncing, you can set up different snapshot schedules. So for example, if you're syncing video files and you're constantly editing throughout the day, maybe you wanna do it more frequently. If you're looking at documents that don't change very often, maybe it's daily. The idea is that you're gonna have some type of data protection from a snapshot perspective. Now snapshots, while they're not backups, they're the first line of defense if you actually have to restore one of these files. So if they're ever lost for whatever reason, deleted, whatever it is, you're gonna to go to the snapshot and you're gonna restore it. That's the first protection that you're gonna restore from. Now that first step is a sync. It's very important to, to really remember that because if for whatever reason the source data gets corrupted or deleted or anything, it's gonna sync that change to the NAS. That's why you have to have snapshots configured. Now the reason why I like using a sync here is because a sync will take the file and move it there instantly. The idea is that the file will go directly from your device 
to your NAS instantly. You don't have to do anything. You save the file and it gets moved there. In the case of a backup, you're really looking at specific intervals. I'm sure there are backup tools you could use that will back up more frequently, but the idea is that I want that file from point A to point B instantly, anytime it's saved. So up to this point, we have Synology Drive set up, which syncs the data to the NAS. We have snapshots configured on the NAS, which will be taken based on whatever frequency we specified. And now we're gonna take a look at backups. Now for backups, there are many, many ways to back up your data. The idea is that you wanna get the data somewhere outside of your primary location. So family member's house, friend's house, or what I'll be using, which is the cloud. I'm gonna be recommending Backblaze B2. This is not a sponsored video. This is not, I don't have any affiliate links. It's nothing like that. I'm suggesting them because I've used them and it works. I'm sure there are tons of other backup uh, destinations that you could use, other tools. I have no doubt that those work as well. I'm gonna be showing Backblaze B2. You can use whatever you want here. I'm gonna be using that. And the reason I like to use that is because it allows me to use hyper backup on my NAS. From hyper backup, I can then configure that as a destination and I could specify the backups as frequently or as infrequently as I want. So like I said earlier, the goal of this backup is disaster recovery. I do not wanna restore any of these files from this cloud location unless I absolutely have to. The reason is because there are costs associated with downloading the data if you're using Backblaze B2. If you're using something else, there might not be costs, but regardless, the idea is that not only is there potential costs, but it's gonna be slow. You're downloading the data from a cloud server. The process, if it's an individual file, it's probably gonna be fine. If you're backing up and restoring terabytes of data, it could be days or weeks. You don't wanna get into that if you don't have to. So on a nightly basis, this data gets backed up to the cloud. At that point, anytime a file is changed, it syncs automatically from my device to my NAS, a snapshot is taken at whatever frequency I specified, and then nightly it gets backed up to an outside location. That has been running, that's the exact process I've been running for over three years now. I've never one time thought about backups because it's all automatically done. Now that final stage being a backup is important because up to this point, everything was a sync. You don't really wanna have a full sync set up because at that point, you're really relying from a disaster recovery perspective on individual file restorations and it can get messy because if you're syncing everything, you're gonna be syncing all the way up. So if you sync a corrupt file, it syncs to your NAS and then it syncs to the cloud. You don't want that, you want a backup. So that's the process, but it's important to understand that there are potential breakpoints with this. So a potential breakpoint, as an example, if you lose connection to your NAS on the initial side, the, the sync side, if you lose a connection to your NAS, the data is not gonna sync to the NAS, it's then not gonna get backed up. So you have to keep an eye on that. You have to periodically check and make sure that everything is syncing properly. Secondary, backup. You have to make sure your backups are running. This is a little easier to monitor because you can set up alerts. So inside of DSM, I have notifications set up. I have an article for that. I'll leave it in the description of the video. But the idea is that if a backup task ever fails, I'm notified of it. So I get an email, I know right away it failed, and at least I can go in and try and figure out why. So from that perspective, it's a little easier to monitor. The bigger issue is honestly that primary section where you're not actually syncing the data, though you think you are. So you gotta keep an eye on that. Now the notifications are true for snapshots as well, because if you're not taking the snapshots and you think you are, you could potentially be in a situation where you think you have some form of data protection and you don't. Now to take it one step further, with newer released NASes and Synology DSM 7.2, you can take immutable snapshots. I'm purposely keeping that out of this video because I think that deserves a full video itself. And I will be doing a video on that in the future. But the idea is that you kind of have to understand when you're using them because you're not gonna be able to delete the snapshots if you ever have to. It's a great feature, great feature. But if you implement it incorrectly, you could find yourself in a situation where you're storing tons of data for a specified period of time and you can't do anything to get rid of it. So that's one layer that you can add on top of this that I will get to in a later video. And if you understand how it works and you wanna implement it, great. But if you don't, stay tuned because you might wanna implement that. So the process I just showed you is the exact process that I have used for over three years. And every single one of my files has been backed up to the cloud and I haven't thought about backups once. The times that I've had issues, 
They've been very, very few and far between. At one point, one of my devices lost connection to my NAS. I noticed it basically right away because I noticed that one of the files I had edited on my other device wasn't updated on the secondary device. That was easy to fix. The second thing was backups. I don't, I can honestly say, I don't think I have had a single time where I've backed up to Backblaze B2 and ever had a backup issue. I have had it when backing up to an offsite NAS, but honestly, it's not something that you really have to worry about. I was using specific tools that I probably shouldn't have been using, testing out different NAS manufacturers, and it just didn't go well, but that's besides the point. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If not, I will see you next time.